Hey, what's up? Welcome back. It's been a little while. In this episode, we're going to jump into Sinatra. We're going to set up a little Sinatra app, but uh, the goal of today is to combine Sinatra, which is a tiny little micro framework in the Ruby ecosystem with uh, Active Record, which is the common ORM that we're going to see in Rails. So in this episode, we're just going to start from scratch here uh, and create a little, let's actually bundle init so we get a gem file. And in my gem file, I'm going to start with just adding uh, gem Sinatra. And the Sinatra gem is super cool. Um, it is very lightweight. It has like a little DSL that we can use. So we're just going to create like a server.rb. Notice I'm not like creating a whole bunch of file structure or anything crazy like that. So I'm just going to say require Sinatra. And now I can say I can use the get word for the root. And that creates a route for us and we pass in this block that's going to be executed and whatever's returned at the end of the block um, is what we're going to see on the page. That's like the response, whatever we're rendering back. So hello world here. And now all we have to do is say Ruby server and that should fire up our server. And now we have a web server listening on port 4567. So if we come over here and go to localhost 4567 and go to the root route. Now we see hello world. So that is the basics for getting a Sinatra app up and running. Now there is this gem called Active Re or Sinatra Dash Active Record. Now uh, at Stripe, what we try to do is build a bunch of these things called Stripe samples. Uh, you can check them out over here, GitHub.com/stripe-samples, and these are sort of like end-to-end -end integrations where we show you how to integrate different things. So we have like. Um, different integration flows here. So this one has a custom payment flow. You can use the payment element or pre-built checkout. Um, a few different options with this sample. But if you drill into each of these, we have server implementations in like seven, maybe eight different languages. And so if you look at Ruby, we always use Sinatra. And the reason we do that is because it makes it really easy for you to say like, okay, here's the route. It's a post route. I know exactly where, what's happening, where this stuff is coming in. I know exactly what Ruby is running when this, uh, when this one route executes and I know what's being returned as the response. It turns out that like we do this in all of the other server languages too. So for Node, we're using Express. Again, it's just like these very simple routes, right? Where we have a get route that goes to slash config and we're gonna render back some JSON. Same thing if we were to look over at another language, maybe even like .NET recently uh, with the release of the .NET minimal API, you can even do this with C Sharp. So now they have like, you can do map a post to the slash create payment intent thing. Um, and then you can write some C Sharp in line, very minimal. Um, and so that is one of the benefits of Sinatra. But the reason that I'm looking for active record is that I, at this point, we don't actually like do any database layer um, manipulation. We're, we don't ever store anything in the database. And the reason is that it's kind of tricky across all these different languages to have a common ORM interface, to have a common database, to have um, this common structure where we technically assume that you're going to be using whatever database you already have, whether that's MongoDB or some Postgres database or some other, you know, like wild backend that you might already have up and running. Um, we don't necessarily have opinions about that, but um, the demo that I want to work on is going to show how to do some billing stuff. So this will be out soon. Um, in order to show that billing, I, I do want to have some database layer. And so I'm looking around for ORMs that might work with these micro frameworks. And so what I want to do is take a look at this Sinatra active record extension. And so the way this works is we have to install a bunch of different gems here. So I'm going to say bundle add um, Sinatra active record. We're going to add SQLite 3 and we're going to add rake. So Sinatra active record, this is going to have our ORM stuff. This is like where all of the metaprogramming and SQL and all of that is sort of built in. SQLite 3 is the database, like the, the database uh, plugin that we're gonna use. So SQLite 3 is gonna be the, the type of database uh, management system that we're gonna use. It's a very lightweight system. All right, not sure who uh, who was actually talking about this recently, but there's something like you can do uh, like SQLite 3 sort of at the edge and you can federate the write ahead logs to other edge S3 th or SQLite 3 things. I don't know, it's like becoming a really popular way for um, 
building these like really distributed systems. Um, okay, so now after we have those gems installed, we're gonna go open up our server.rb and add this one require for active record. And then we, we're gonna use set database to this adapter. Now Sinatra uses this set thing all the time. For example, we might say like set port to, I don't know, 4200. That will make it so that, okay, now when the app starts up, it starts listening on 4200. It's kind of how we configure the server is by calling set. This is another part of the, um, the domain specific language or the DSL for Sinatra. So let's fire the server back up and we'll notice that it still runs and that's all cool. But if we ran like bundle, let's see, bundle, actually no, the next thing we need to do is we need to create a rake file. So we need to say, um, we're creating this rake file. Rake is similar to make. So make and make files are the thing that you use in like C and C++ to combine a bunch of different loaders and build, build things basically to like make things. So rake is the Ruby implementation of that. So we're gonna add a rake file. I don't think we've talked about rake too much. Um, I might have an old episode for setting up rake tasks and passing arguments to them. Um, but all this is gonna do is create a new namespace DB. And this is gonna look very similar to when you are running Rails commands and you say like Rails DB create, Rails DB migrate. It actually, before it was Rails DB something, it was rake DB something. And so this is like, we're gonna, we're gonna harken back a little bit here. <laughs> Bundle exec rake dash T is gonna give us the list of rake tasks that are available. And so here we can just say like bundle exec rake DB. I don't think I can run. Yeah, so I need to run it from bundle exec. So bundle exec uh, rake DB create will create a new database that is the name of the database is gonna be foo.sqlite3. I don't know, we can name this whatever we want, like my app.sqlite3 or just like app.sqlite3. So if we say um, bundle exec uh, rake db create, this is gonna create that database. And we see created database app SQLite3. We can use the SQLite3 um, CLI or command line tool to open up this app.sqlite3 file. And now we're inside of like a REPL or like, you know, whatever the, uh, the prompt is for SQLite. So we can actually say like select star from users or whatever. There's no, there's no table user. So it tells us there's no such table users. Um, there's a bunch of like meta commands in here that start with dots. So we can say dot tables. That'll show us all the tables. Um, there are none. So we'll use dot exit for now. The next thing we might want to do is create a migration so that we can create a table. So we'll say bundle exec uh, rake db create migration. Oh, and then we need a name for it. So let's say create users. I found that like if you just pass this as another argument, that will work as the name. You don't actually need to use this like name equals thing. That created a migration for us. So let's go take a look. When we're using Rails, we can say like Rails G model and that will generate the whole model class for us and tests and migrations and all of that. But when we're working with Sinatra, there are no model files necessarily. So we're, we're dropping down a layer lower here. We have to actually like write our own create table statements here. So we're gonna say create table users do T. Now this T that's yielded is gonna have a bunch of special methods on it. So we can say like t.string is the email address of the user. We still have like t.timestamps and whatever other basic stuff you might expect from an active record migration. So that's pretty cool. So now we can say bundle exec rake db migrate and that will run the migration. This actually changes the underlying database. So now if we were to say something like SQLite 3 app.sqlite3. Now we can do dot tables and we see the users table there. We also see a couple other metadata tables for us. So if we said like, I don't know, dot schema of users, that'll show us like the actual schema command or like the schema that was used to generate the users table. We can select star from users now and there's nothing in there. Um, one helpful thing that you might want to do is say dot headers on. So that way when you select, it'll actually have the headers. Otherwise there is no header column. Um, so f that sort of gets us started and now we have a database and we have our server. So let's sort of like figure out what we want, want to do here with the server. So I think inside of here, we actually want to create a class called user and that's going to inherit from active record base. And I think we want to say that we want to set the table equal to users, I believe. So, um, no, okay, let's see. So is this actually just gonna work like this? So when we say get slash, let's say, um, 
um, user dot find or create by email is wave at cjive.dev dot to json uh, Ruby server. I don't know. This is, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. Uh, refresh. Boom. Look at that. Okay. So this is the JSON for the user we just created. We have this ID has the email that we gave it. If we refresh the page, we're not creating a new one because it's finding or creating. So it's sort of upserting. If we were to change the email address, that would change that. Um, but I think this might actually work. So let's, let's get uh, a little fancier with this. Let's open up um, our server.rb and let's add a, a new route. That's actually Let's actually make this get route return like a template. So, so we can say ERB and then some template name. And if we, I believe if we have a directory called um, views, maybe, uh, then we can have like index.html.erb. And this can have like some HTML. Uh, and maybe it has like, I don't know. Um, time.now.2i. I think this might work. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, also, you know what? While we're here, let's, uh, so inside of our gem file, we just have Sinatra, but I'm going to add Sinatra dash contrib. And that's like the, I don't know how, why they keep it separate, but um, I think it's to keep the pure library, like the core library sh smaller or something. But um, if we say Sinatra reloader, I believe that is like the gem that will automatically reload for us. So there's a lot of like really basic things that don't come out of the box. Um, but there are a lot of stuff that do come out of the box. Okay. So no file template.rb. So this is another thing. Sinatra ERB templates. Okay. So the, the template name needs to actually not be HTML ERB. It just should be just ERB. So now what we can do is we can create a form here. And again, this is like another good reason not to use form for is so that you can just write forms wherever you want. So we'll say the form action is going to be like users and the method is going to be post. Um, and then we will say that we're going to accept in um, the email the email of the user. Okay, so now we have this input box where we can type in a, an email address. So if we put in a, an email address and hit enter, Sinatra says that, oh, we don't have a post route for users. So I'm just going to copy that and jump over to the server and add a post route for users. And what I want to do here is we'll do like that upsert thing again. So we'll say user.find or create by email is, I don't know, params email. And then we'll say this is like at user is equal to this thing. And then we can render, um, let's see, let's redirect. Or yeah, no, let's uh, run our ERB um, users. And we'll add like a new template here. And in the users ERB template, we'll just put out at users.json to JSON. See what we get. Okay, we got null and we got null because, oh, this should just be at user. There we go. Okay, so now there is user number two in the database. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, if we wanted to, we can also use sessions. Um, so that's like another Sinatra thing. But I think like what I, basically what I wanted to do was kind of like get to a place where I could see um, if I can do like CRUD actions for users. So let's just like keep going down this path. So we're going to make a get route for users and ERB users. Let's make this one be like ERB user for like show user or something like that. And then for users, we'll say at users is user all. And then we'll copy this and say user ERB. And then we'll go into users and say users to JSON. And that is a get request now. And now we see the array of users. We have the one that has wave at CJF dev and we have the email for Jenny Rosen. So this is, this is pretty cool. We're, we're getting like that. Now we have create, we have read, we have like, um, yeah, list now. Uh, I don't know, like update and delete shouldn't be too tricky. I think that I'm at least at a point where I'm like happy with the fact that we can use active record directly just by 
creating a class, setting this up, uh, installing the gem, and then uh, adding a rake file with those different commands that are um, documented directly in the GitHub repo. So this is kind of how you set up and run with Active Record and Sinatra. Hopefully this was useful. If it was, throw that thumbs up on there. I, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be back and uh, looking forward to hanging out with y'all more. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.